Former military head of state General Abdul Salami Abubakar has expressed concern over Nigeria's worsening economic situation, calling on the federal government to take immediate action. Receiving the leadership of the Campaign for Democracy and Human Rights in MENA, General Abubakar noted that the hardship is getting out of control, with many struggling to afford basic necessities. He advocated for a collaborative effort between federal, state and local governments to alleviate the economic hardship. He suggested that the government should flood communities with food and sell it at low prices. On the proposed NBAD governance protest, General Abubakar emphasized the need for peaceful demonstrations, warning against violence and looting. And now to discuss this, we are joined by Global Affairs Analyst Dayo Fagwalu. Dayo, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. It's, it's a pleasure. Uh, uh, question is, how effective do you think the federal government has been in, respons in responding to these economic challenges? And what immediate action would you suggest that they do? Um, that's, that's a rather uh, tough question. <laughs> For starters, um, the object of, of policy in itself, or economic policy in itself, is geared towards uh, elevating, I mean, the, the suffering or the situation of the people that live within the confines of whatever state is deploying economic strategy to solve problems. And uh, so far, it's very clear that, in my view, this government has lost control of uh, of their approach to solving this problem. And one of the issues is they have um, imbibed a free market approach to economics, which doesn't seem to work for Nigeria. And I think for starters, one of the ways to solve the problem is to reverse the policies they have in place. Um, markets are not free. And what I mean is the free market is a conceptual uh, descriptive in economics. And basically, markets are not free. Markets are manipulated. So um, the call of uh, General Abdul Salam is welcome. I mean, it's it's it's, it's an interesting uh, thing to have the former leader. I mean, raise the issue that things are falling apart, and the center is not holding. But having said that, um, it goes far beyond that. This government doesn't seem to have a listening ear, and it doesn't seem to have the ear of the people. Free markets do not work. I mean, the laws of demand and supply are, are supposed to be statistical, um, you know, <clears throat> approaches to solving problems. But in reality, where you manipulate the circumstances, then demand and supply become artificial. And this is what is happening in Nigeria. I don't think that this government has a grasp um, of sound economic policy, and I don't think they're innovative. Innovation is one of the greatest things that would solve the problems we have in Nigeria. Innovative thought, innovative thinking. Um, I mean, first, of course, you know that one of the problems we have is security. I mean, security influences the availability of food from the farms, because the farmers can't go to the farms. And if they can't go to the farms, automatically supply is limited and demand increases. Population is growing at, an, at a rate of uh, 3% per annum. And that means food supply must also go at a minimum of 3% per annum. If this is not happening, there's a problem. And obviously, the government hasn't gotten a grasp of these concepts, these economic concepts, and they're dealing us a hard end of a stick. Um, this is my position as regarding you know, whatever is going on at the moment. They just don't have a clue. Mm. That's my position. Well, Mr. Fagbalu, they just don't have a clue. That's a very interesting way to put it. Um, but General Abubakar mentioned the need for collaboration between state, federal, and also local governments, which is how it's supposed to be. But what practical right. steps can you suggest that could enhance this cooperation between state, uh, federal, and the local government? Well, I think for starters, uh, they've granted the local government autonomy, I mean, theoretically. And I, I think that's a good starting point, basically. I, I have always said that one of the things that should go on regularly is town hall meetings. Um, people, people need to meet on a regular basis. I mean, and that's in to collaborate effectively. There must be a consistent conversation, a consistent narrative. It's not just um, the, the leadership of the local governments 
the state governments and the federal government, but also representatives of the people themselves. I mean, that's the only way this is going to work. They must have constant conversations, preferably things like town hall meetings where they come together. You have discussions of how much land do you have, how much seeds do we have available, what are the strategies we could use. It must be a constant conversation between people that know what to do, people that are affected in the process and the policymakers. I mean, it can't just be a thing about policy and strategy when one is not having a conversation with the people that these, these uh, policies are affecting. And I think this is one of the biggest problems we have. I mean, it seems to be a palliative government that's always giving out rice for every problem. I mean, you have a saw, it's, it's rice. You have a cough, it's rice. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like they've run out of ideas. So like you said, um, one strategy is consistent meetings, well, if possible, weekly meetings weekly coordination meetings between, I mean, representatives in the local government, the cooperatives in particular, I mean, the unions, I mean, the, the local cooperatives, the farmers cooperatives, the traders cooperatives, the market uh, leaders, I mean, consistent meetings. You'll be shocked how much advice and how much solutions come out from the people that are affected by these policies themselves. Well, I hear you loud on the uh, rice bit there, but um, the general also suggested that communities be flooded with low price commodities that they can afford. Um, this is a step in the right direction. However, you also talked about the fact that there should be constant convers uh, conversation regarding exactly where we are. But whose responsibility is it? Is it the policymakers or is it the people that have to call this town hall meeting which you've just called for? I think that's a policy thing in particular. I mean, it's just like saying, um, I mean, the, the government has a policy that all stakeholders involved in a particular process must meet on a regular basis. Sometimes policy is actually effective. Now, one of the things that is missing is the culture, this culture of meeting and having these, these conversations together. It's missing already. So the only way to correct that is to put policy in place, a strategic policy that makes this a routine, just like uh, uh, the cleanups we have every, we used to have every month. Okay, at the end of every month, you could say, look, as a strategy, one of the things we need to do is we need to have consistent conversations, consistent updates on how far these policies are working, if they're not working, what suggestions could be made available by the local market women, the local farmers, the local traders, you know, all the local communities. I mean, the Blacksmiths Association, the Mechanics Association, it's, it has to be a robust conversation of the people that are involved, the stakeholders in the problem and the solution providers consistently. Well, Mr. Fagwalu, thank you very much for joining us this evening with your expert opinion. Thank you indeed. Thank you very much.